Hi, this is Kevin Deal from Upscale Audio, and today we are going to talk about the Klipsch La Scala AL5. Oh my God, I got to tell you something. Now, the speaker's been out for just a little bit, so we're a little bit late to the game bringing you a video, but I wanted to bring it to you for a couple reasons. Number one is I got inspired. I was in my car and I was listening to Pictures of Matchstick Men by Status Quo. And then I was listening to some Donovan Hurdy Gurdy, and then I, uh, and I started thinking about it, go, man, you know what? That is the kind of shit that I love to listen to on a Klipsch loudspeaker, and I'm going to explain that to you in a second. Then I started thinking about just psychedelic music, and I want to ask you guys, before we go anywhere with any of this, in the comments, I want you to tell me what you think the greatest psychedelic songs are of all time. When I mean psychedelic, I don't know why I think of Pictures of Matchstick Men. I think it's because of the guitar. I think about White Rabbit from Jefferson Airplane. And the ones that mother gives you don't do anything at all. I think about Are You Experienced by Jimi Hendrix, of course. Maybe The Doors, I, I guess, obviously, because it's all about that stuff, right? But still, I want to know what you think of Justin, and I want to read it so I can see if there's anything I'm missing that I'm forgetting to listen to. And that's why you got to be streaming and make sure you don't listen to your CDs. Get a music streamer. And that way you're not going to forget some of these great songs that you used to love. And then get on Cobuzz or get on Tidal, you know, and just love this stuff. So I got all pumped up listening to this and I go, you know, why is it that Eclipse Loudspeaker makes it so that kind of music sound so good? And then I, you know, when people come in and they look at the La Scala, I have to say that this speaker gets more comments than probably any speaker in our store. When people come in, they look at it, they go, what? You know, right? They go, what? And if they don't know anything about hi-fi, they usually go, oh, but that one's got a whole lot of bass. And, you know, well, that's not true. And then if you listen to uh, Klipsch's tagline, they talk about pissing off the neighbors since 1946, so you must think that, oh, well, clip speakers are bright and uh, they're made for rock and rollers. And that's not true either. You know, I'd have to say that uh, half the speakers that, half the people that buy clip speakers from us are not hardcore rock and rollers. I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit. I'm going to talk about the, the good things that this speaker does and maybe what it uh, does not excel in for you and then how we can fix it. Because, okay, well, over here, let's get, let's get to where the speaker came from. It came from Winthrop Rockefeller, who was running for governor of Arkansas in the 1960s, and he wanted to take a, a, a quarter horn with him on a train to go talk to the masses and get himself elected to be the governor of Arkansas. But the idea of taking a Klipsch horn on a train was not gonna work, so Paul Klipsch, drew this thing out and he came up with something that was smaller and indeed that is what happened and then the rest is history and there's been a lot of changes to the la scala over the years a lot of i've got a sheet full of every driver change all the crossover changes some of these changes were just lost in history and, and pieces of paper lost in drawers. Uh, they had made these in a single cabinet called an LSBR at one point. I mean, just all kinds of stuff. And because Klipsch has always been looking to innovate and move the speaker forward. But then the very, very uh, big change happened in around 2005 when they came out with the, uh, uh, the La Scala II, uh, where they really humanized the speaker and made it a speaker that could be used in people's homes. And, uh, and now they wanted to take the speaker and really refine it again and make it a, a much higher performance product. And they did that with the new AL5. So how did they do that? Well, first off, let's talk about, well, let's talk about what they did, okay? They changed the drivers. The, the new high frequency driver uh, is uh, with the tra uh, Tractrix horn is a vast improvement over the other driver. And I don't know why anybody ever says clip speakers are bright 
anybody that knows what they're talking about knows that if anything, this speaker, once it's broken in, and it takes hundreds of hours to do this, but once it is broken in, if anything, this speaker is very easy to listen to. It's, it's actually ever so slightly warm. And then they have the new mid-range driver, and I love the new mid-range driver. It, they somehow got a little bit more meat on the bones. The, the, uh, the horn for this mid-range driver, it goes all the way back, actually sticks out just a little bit from the cabinet here. So it is a long, long horn. And man, I don't know what they did, but then the mid-band is ever, but you know, if you got the old ones, look, don't worry about it, just love them. Love them. Every Lascala is a great speaker, but I gotta say something. They really knocked it out of the ballpark with this new speaker. The cabinet is beefier than it was. This speaker weighs, uh, as I recall, it's over 200 pounds between the two cabinets. Thank God it is two pieces. This is the 15 inch base driver in a folded horn cabinet. We'll show you a picture of it blown up. Uh, it is not a boom box though even though it's a 15 inch driver, even though there is so much cabinet volume, because what they were trying to do is create a really high efficiency uh, base driver, a speaker that does not take very much. You could practically drive this speaker uh, with a Walkman, and I'm not kidding you when I say that. I might try that one day just for fun. I might take a little portable headphone thingy and plug it into a pair of these and see what it would do. But the beauty of that is this. And this is why these speakers sound so good with some older recordings and why I can play pictures of Matchstick Men on this or play pictures of some old jazz recordings on this is because high efficiency speakers, there's a greater difference between light and dark and loud and soft. And it can take some older recordings and it can just make them breathe more and sound more human. And that's why people go, what is it with the La Scalas? What is it with all Klipsch loudspeakers? Because in some ways the speaker, if you look at how it measures, it is not a perfect speaker. But there's so many things in life that are amazing and beguiling, but they are technically not perfect. Think about Louis Armstrong's voice, right? Think about certain female singers that you go, why is it that I, I find this so beguiling, but, it, but it's not a perfect voice? Or guitar, when a guitar player overdrives his amp, right? The speaker has that kind of magic that people talk about over and over and over and over again. And because it is high efficiency, you can use it with so many different amplifiers, as long as the amplifier is relatively quiet. So can you use a 300B amp? Yes, you can. I would be mindful of uh, being able to control how much gain the preamp has. So there's a little bit of system, because the speaker is, it's supposed to be 105 dB efficient. Now I think that might be a little bit generous. I think it's a little bit less than that, but still, You've got high efficiency speakers, you gotta be mindful of what you're doing. You don't wanna have a, 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 an amplifier that has a high input sensitivity and then have a, a preamp with 30 dB of gain. If you don't know what any of that means, you call us up because all of my salespeople are trained to be technical engineers and understand what all those things mean. But if you do it right, man, it is absolute magic. What the, so if you're gonna get a tube amp, I mean, yeah, the Western Electric, ah, the 91E, hell yeah, because that has a built-in proprietary low distortion circuit in it. You run that on a pair of K-horns, it's gonna blow your mind. Prima Luna, Prima Lunas, I don't care how much money you spend, you are not gonna get an amplifier that has a better power supply or a preamp that has less noise. It is like peanut butter and jelly with clips. My service manager, Josh, he's got a pair of K-horns and he's running a, an Evo 300 with, I forget which preamp he has. Might be an Evo 300 also, but he has the, three of them, the Evo 300 power amp with it. And this guy is one of the best bench techs I know. And he just says it. He goes, man, it's as quiet as a church mouse. Or the pathos stuff, oh my God. 
pathos with uh, clips is amazing. So look, what's the Achilles heel of the speaker? It is easy to place, frankly. It's a relatively easy speaker to get good performance from. To get the very, very best performance, though, you want to make sure that you take the time to move the speaker around a little bit while you are listening. But that's the way it should be done no matter what. This idea of dividing your room into lines or using lasers or tape measures is absolute bunk because it doesn't work. You have to do it by ear. If you want a speaker that is this big or if it's a small stand mount to disappear, it happens with a, a quarter of an inch of adjustment and it just locks and it's like, boom, there it is. Don't touch it. And you got to have somebody with you. We have a speaker set up this that we supply to people and it gives you the steps that you use to get there. Now I talked about the base response of this speaker. It is not a boom box, right? And it's been well documented. It has great bass, but if you're thinking that it's such a big speaker, it's a boom, boom, tinkle, tinkle thingy, it is not. And if you want to add a subwoofer to it, well, it's about 105 dB efficient according to the specs. That means you have to have a subwoofer that is going to keep up with that, and not all of them will. Uh, we understand that here. We did a video with John Hunter from Rel Acoustics because John Hunter came down and we did a lot of experiments and had a lot of fun in our sound room with Kat and all the other people and uh, finding out, you know, they make a subwoofer that's called the Predator. And, uh, well, we can talk to you about that. If you ever want to do, talk, if you have these, you want to get a sub, reach out to my salespeople and we'll tell you how to make it work and how to make it sound good. But most people uh, don't do it. I'm just talking about you folks that really want to bump it up, or maybe you have a great big room. The bigger the room, the harder it's going to be to pressurize. I've learned that now at the new Costa del Kevin house. My sound room is about 1,100 square feet, and it is hard to pressurize. Oh my God. So look, <clears throat> these cabinets are handmade. They are book-ended uh, veneers, so if you look at this, it is one piece of veneer, top to bottom. Made by craftspeople, made with pride. I have met the people from Klipsch, and they really give a shit about what they do. You look at that factory, and you look at how they do things, and the fact that you can get that in a speaker that is 200 pounds, it has two cabinets that's wired with AudioQuest internal wiring. They're using the AudioQuest Type 4 inside. They put new amazing bi-wire uh, uh, speaker connectors on the back. They beefed up the cabinetry. I mean, they did all of these things, and it's all made in the United States. And then these new grills. I love this grill material. Oh, my God, it looks so bitchin'. A lot of times I like to leave, leave grills off. Not here. It's fabulous. It is absolutely lovely. We have them in stock all the time because it can take two months to get them. And I fight like hell to make sure that anything you want on upscale audio is here. So if you want them in walnut, got them. Want them in cherry, got them. Want them in black, got them. I spend a ton of money to make sure that everything is here. So look, come to our store, talk to our non-commissioned salespeople. We really want to make sure you are happy. I want you to know that. I give you the ups, I give you the downs. The speaker is, is almost all up, and I'm so thrilled to be a Klipsch dealer. Thanks for listening at Upscale Audio.